Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are working on a 1995 Ford F-250 with the mighty 7.3 liter power stroke diesel engine. And this is actually my truck. So, longtime viewers of the uh, YouTube channel will remember that I had a 2006 F-250 with the 6 liter power stroke. And that truck was completely destroyed in a head-on collision. And it has now been turned into razor blades. This truck was purchased as the uh, temporary replacement for that truck and you know it's one of those deals where it's only temporary unless it works and it seems to work fine so probably going to be my ride for the time being. But it's got a little bit of an issue. It's cold and it doesn't want to start. I think the other morning it was like I don't know, 34 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that, so just above zero degrees Celsius. And if you've ever worked around Ford diesel engines or their international diesel engines, they do not like to start in the cold weather. So plugging it in helps, which leads me to believe that it's an issue with these, the glow plugs. So I'm so confident that I went ahead and bought eight new glow plugs and we're going to do a tiny bit of testing and then we'll probably go ahead and install these. Take a little tour of the engine bay here. These old 7.3 liter engines, they're like horse and buggy simple compared to the newer like Super Duties. You know, the 6 liters and stuff were so so much stuff jammed in here. You know, these trucks don't have any charge air cooler. There's no EGR, there's no EGR cooler. There's not a bunch of computer modules bolted on top of everything. Super simple stuff. Now you can see this one's been molested a bit. That's a fuel pressure regulator that's bent up and they've added an extra gauge to it. The old mechanical fuel pump is gone. It's been replaced with an electric pump down on the fuel on the uh, frame rail. See they've added a relay and a fuse for that. Hmm. A little bit of a hack job. Got the cold air intake. Make all the high school kids jealous. Now the big thing about this truck is that it was a tire store service truck. So of course it's had the hell beat out of it, but it had a factory air compressor that ran off of the accessory belt drive here on the front. And as a result, the the degas bottle for the coolant system was located like over here somewhere. The guy I bought it from, he, he tried to fix some of these issues and put it back the way it was supposed to be. He didn't get all the way done with it, but he was a pretty sharp guy. And uh, he did a few things that are probably a good idea. So he upgraded to the later Super Duty style valve cover gaskets and harnesses. So that's a good thing. These are your glow plug wiring harnesses here and this is your glow plug relay. So he had I think the right idea there because the original gaskets for these older trucks they did fail pretty frequently. So this doohickey here is your glow plug solenoid and should be yeah hot to the battery on one side and then uh, we should get something here on this side whenever we have the key turned on. So key on the solenoids working. As far as I know the 7.3 power stroke just has a timer relay. There's no uh, like temperature sensor or whatever like they had on the old IDI engines. There we go. So it just clicked out. So the, the, the solenoid stays on long enough for the engine to you know kinda catch and then not blow too much white smoke you know when it first starts up. These engines are pretty cold blooded. So anyway the issue is not with the glow plug solenoid. This is a brand new Motorcraft ZD11 glow plug. I'm going to show you the resistance across the, the plug here. So 0.6 ohms. I was getting 0.5 ohms a minute ago. Lower the better. So this is basically a big resistor, right? And the lower the resistance, the higher the amperage. The higher the amperage, the more power that we're getting to it, basically. So, lower the better. 
where on the passenger side I've got the valve cover off. So these that's the rocker arm right there and the glow plug is right down inside here. You probably can't even see it on the camera. There it is right there. That's the tip of it. And this is the end of the harness. It just just sticks on the end of it like a like a spark plug. So I'll try to show you the resistance of this glow plug that's in the truck now. If I can stop blocking the meter. So 13.4 ohms. So if you want to do this test without taking the valve cover off, just undo the plug to the valve cover gasket. Yours will probably look different than this, but in this case it's the outside four. So you see I got 15.1 there, 11 there, 28 there, 12 there. So all these glow plugs are shot. So usually the rule of thumb is that uh, they'll start with two bad glow plugs, they won't start with three bad glow plugs. In this case, I don't think I have any that are totally open. They're just all reading high resistance, which means that they're not drawing as much amperage as they should. They're not getting as hot as they should. All right, we'll go ahead and pull this one out of here. Takes a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, quarter inch drive because it's pretty tight in there and they shouldn't be tight I mean you shouldn't have to really crank on them to get them out there it is doesn't look too bad really just gonna see if these are genuine motorcraft so comparing it to the the new one, all the numbers are exactly the same. So I would say that it had genuine Motorcraft glow plugs in it. And I don't know who makes these. I mean, obviously Ford doesn't make their own glow plugs. They're probably made by Bosch. Uh, there's all kinds of aftermarket glow plugs available. Champion, AC Delco, NGK. I don't know, you can do whatever you want. I've had the best luck using the original Motorcraft plugs, but, you know, do what you want. So, yeah, here we go. Like I said, they don't have to be that tight. Okay, there's probably a torque spec, but who's got time to look that up? Okay, torque to factory spec. Put the plug back on and rinse and repeat seven times. So I took the intake off on the driver's side and I noticed that somebody's replaced this brake line. And this looks like NICAP brake line, which is, you know, the good stuff. But I couldn't resist pulling this fitting apart. That's a brass compression fitting. And not only is that a bad idea, it's actually illegal. At least in my state, it's illegal. So we definitely need to be fixing that right away. These compression fittings are not rated anywhere near the pressure that you're going to find in a brake line. Uh, that's, a, that's a major hack job there. Okay, I think the job is done. The glow plugs are installed, and we'll give it a good shakedown tomorrow. It's supposed to be pretty cold tonight, so I'll leave it unplugged, and we'll see if it starts. That's kind of the, the ultimate test. And there's a few more things I need to do. The batteries look pretty crusty. The one's dated 9 of 16, so it's three years old. Three years is really pushing it on a diesel engine. And that's usually the two big things that will keep these trucks from starting, is bad batteries and bad glow plugs. You know, if they just won't crank over fast enough, they won't start, and they really won't start without the glow plugs. So I'll have to fix a few other things. Looks like the uh, the oil dipstick is leaking a little bit. Probably needs a new O-ring. So I'll do that whenever I change the oil. And then 
I'll definitely have to fix that brake line union or that, that joint. There's probably more of them. I think that line probably runs all the way back to the back axle. So, yeah, it's my truck, so I don't feel, you know, too nervous about it. But if that was a customer's vehicle, you know, you wouldn't want to let that out of your shop without at least noting it in writing. I just so happened to have a 6 liter power stroke engine sitting here. So I'll show you the glow plug arrangement on these engines. These kind of suck. So the glow plugs are actually outside of the valve covers. So this is the glow plug harness right here. And I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard to make out. There's a little groove right here in this boot. And there's a special tool that you put into this groove. And you're supposed to be able to just pop those boots right out. The problem is there's an O-ring. It's down about, I don't know, probably about 10 millimeters down below this surface that seals the the glow plug boot keeps the oil from pouring out of this thing. This is actually aluminum. It's not part of the head, it's part of the rocker cover. And the aluminum corrodes above that o-ring and you cannot get these glow plug harnesses to come apart. So if you live anywhere where there's any kind of salt or your truck's got a lot of miles on it and you want to do glow plugs on a 6 liter 100% count on changing out the harness and these can be a real bear because imagine you're working up underneath the wheel well you gotta take the fender liner out and you're working up from the bottom trying to get to this thing you know you got power steering stuff in your way or air conditioning stuff on the other side um, yeah these can be a real pain I've had to like drill into the plastic and thread in screws and then pull on the screw with a slide hammer to get them out it's not a lot of fun. Yeah, check that out. Factory head bolts. Okay, it's about, I don't know, 38, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So I don't know what that is. Four or five degrees Celsius. So the truck's not been plugged in. Let's uh, see if she'll start. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Problem solved. Thanks for watching.